Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Hong Kong Fooey character, cartoon character from the 70s. As you can see for the, we've got our template already drawn out. I literally use tracing paper now. Previous projects, way back I used to print them all off and then draw around them. But I'm just finding it better to use the tracing paper. One, because I can zoom out the image. I know for a fact I want it to be literally just under six inches wide, which is the same size of the rough fencing wood that I like to use on my shed projects. This is fairly cheap to purchase and it does sand up really nice. A couple of minutes with a belt sander, it comes up really nice. And you're not wasting a lot of money on all your fancy woods, especially if it's just something that's going to go outside on the shed. Like I say, we've, we've already drawn it out on tracing paper. Literally place that straight on top of the tablet or computer. It is possible. Draw it out. I normally use pencil. Then we stick it to our piece of wood. I know it's going to fit on. Because obviously we zoomed it out. So we just to say squeeze it on our piece of wood. Then I use carbon paper. Put carbon paper underneath. And then I go around it all again with a pen. Just so it stands out from the pencil we used before. Once we've done all that. You can see from that. There's our nice... Hong Kong Fui character, and he's all ready to route out. Now you have two options with these kind of projects. One, you can either remove the, the inset pieces, which are all these larger sections, which we're going to do today. Take five minutes of your time to shade in the areas that you want to remove, or shade, shade in the areas you want to leave, one or the other. We're going to remove all the shaded areas, so all these will be took out all around here, now on the original image, these lines are quite narrow and quite small. You could route them out either side, but when you start sanding it, they could just pop off and break. So you've got to widen things slightly, just so it fits in with the work that you're doing. And like I say, we're going to remove all the inside. Another option on this one, you could remove all the lines if you wanted to, and leave all the larger areas intact, and then paint them afterwards. That way it would look like it's actually been stuck to a backer. And it's a personal thing. I'm just going to remove all the insides. And then we'll paint all this the proper colours. Quick sanding over. And then we'll cut it out on a scroll saw. Just because I like the shape of it. You could leave it on this wood no problem. And even route out the background. The same depth as the inners. Just so it stands up literally by 3 millimeters, Which I like to use. And just find my little gauge. I made myself a little gauge like this. And that's a 3 mm mark. And that one's a four. You could have five or six. You can also purchase these depth gauges. Like I say, three millimeters. The piece we're going to use is a CNC bit. And that is 3.175 millimeters. And that literally just fits in there snug. So I know that's my depth. And I use that on most of my projects. And it's just a nice size without going too deep. I have done deeper projects before. But on these little small things like this, you don't have to go too crazy. Now to make it fit a quarter inch router, you need what they call an adapter reducer collet. It's basically just a tube like that. Just about to see that. It's got a couple of slits inside of it. And your CNC bit slots into there. That will now fit your router, no problem. If you've got an half an inch shaft router, you'll obviously need a bigger adapter. If you prefer to use a Dremel with the router attachment, that will fit into your Dremel, no problem whatsoever. So we're going to slot that in there. They do come in different degrees. Uh, but that looks like a 15 or even a 20. You can get 10s, 15, 20s. I think there's even some 60s out there. Same again, it's just a personal preference. There is better bits out there. A lot of the proper guys, as I call them, they'll use profile bits to go around all these. And then spiral up cut bits. They're quite expensive. But I prefer these little cheap bit, cheap eBay specials and they do exactly the same job in my eyes. So what we're going to do, we've popped our CNC bit on and we're just going to go around all the lines, always route up up to the line and if you're removing the backer up to the line there. Never route on the line because if you're going to go up that line there and then up that line there, even though that's only three millimeters, you can always say you're a couple of millimeters into the wood, you're just going to narrow that gap there. So you want to route up to it basically just say leave the pencil line that way when we come to clear both sides of this 
that should basically still be the same thickness in between. So just bear that in mind. If we're moving the outside areas, outset, we we'll route up to there. Moving the inside, we we'll route up to there. Never on the line itself. You'll find your own little technique as you go along. So once we've gone around all the lines with our CNC bit, we will remove that. And today we're going to use one of these end milling bits. I've used these on all my projects. They've got the same size shaft on. We can get one fairly big, but also we need one that's going to fit into these little smaller areas like up here. So not too crazy. Little bits like that you could actually remove with the CNC bit. I like that little section there, CNC bit. And I'll probably remove all that with a CNC bit. So there's bigger bits, it's entirely up to you, but they, they clear out nicely. They do the side walls, plus they also smooth out the backer itself. If we do find it's a little bit too slow, and like I say, it fits the same adapter collet. So we just slot that in there, these plastic markers on. There is some come without those markers, so there's no panic if you haven't got those on your bits when they arrive. So that's for your clear out. The CNC bits to do our lines with. If it's a little bit too slow, I like to use these straight flush bits. Now that's too chunky. If you go in with that and you catch those middle those two legs, it will take that off no problem whatsoever. So we don't want nothing too fancy. You'll get a packet of five to seven of these for next to nothing. I prefer the smallest one. I think that's a one eighth bit to be honest. It's been a while. Now I, when I first started doing projects, I used that on everything. I would do my lines and all the clear out and all my Videos from the early days, that's all I ever used, just one piece. Then I stumbled across the CNC bits and the end milling bits. So there's our three bits we're going to use today. We might get away with those first two, but we'll just see how slow and how nicely it's coming out. Okay, we'll set that in the router. We'll set it to three millimetres. And then we'll start routing this one out. Right, we've gone all the way round with our CNC mix. Now it's still a bit rough and red at this moment in time. So that's nothing to be concerned about. We will be going round with our Dremel flexi cable and an engraving bit, just to basically just give it a nice tandy up and a bit of sanding down. Remember, we've got to cut this out with a scroll saw yet, so we're around those edges off at the same time. But for now, we've got to remove all these inner sections, remember? All these pieces here, they've all got to come out. I want to start off with the end milling bits. I do like to use these. And like I said previously, they'll fit the same adapter collet. You can just find it. Here it is. So it's just a case of sliding that out and popping one in. We don't have to go too crazy. This is plenty big enough to fit inside those areas. You'll notice I've removed a few sections into the corner bits because that'll just be a little bit tight to fit that in there. So we do that with the CNC bit. And then we can set it to the same depth as that piece or any one of these and then start removing all these sections i'll do so many with the end milling bits just to show you and if it's a little bit too slow we'll pop on a straight flush bit the smallest one and that will clear that out really quickly but i'm in no race i will put a description in the title to all the bits what you need like i said previously these are just the bits i use there's certainly def definitely bits out there but they come with a Bigger price tag. It's entirely up to you. Okay, let's start uh, clearing this one out now.
Right, you can see from that, we've more or less cleared most of it out. That's coming out no problem whatsoever. And I'm quite happy to use those end milling bits just to complete it all. However, it seems we did mention the straight flush bits. That's got a quarter inch shaft on, so obviously you don't need the adapter collet for that. I'm just going to pop that into the router and basically just remove these last two sections here, just to show you. But uh, personally myself, the end milling bits would have cleaned all that out, no problem. Okay, let's remove the last two sections. You can see from that those straight flush bits remove those sections just as easy slightly quicker but they are a little bit more aggressive to your end milling bits so i would be careful especially if you've got thin lines like this i would go on with your router bit because you're going to catch that and it might just break that off there so for delicate areas i will certainly stick with the end milling bits but the straight flush bits they work just as well but you certainly won't put something on as big as that. It's quite aggressive. And like I say, it will break things off. So just be a bit careful what you use. I tend to go for the smallest one there is. And just while we're on the router subjects, just like to show you this one here. That's actually three inches long is that router. Now I've used that once when I tried to make a bowl and route out the middle section. I couldn't even hold the router to be honest. The vibration was horrendous. So just basically just trying to show you that different... <laughs> router bits you can get that is some serious pieces that but uh it takes some holding that is for sure anyway cut it out now we're going to go onto the scroll saw and i want to cut this one out the good thing about removing the inner sections and leaving this piece here and all the way around the edge it does give you a nice pencil line to follow you could leave it on that wood if you wanted to like i said and literally just route out the back or just paint it as it is and sand it down and leave it on there. A bit of linseed oil on the back. But I'm going to cut it out. It seems to be the style of my projects on the side of the shed. Now for that, I like to use a spiral blade on a scroll saw. Like I say, the spiral blade, they're not for everybody. The good thing about the blade is it, they do cut in any direction. As a teeth spiral, obviously, the full length of the blade. So you could actually... Put that into your saw just here and then just start cutting and then coming down basically you've not a lot of movement on the wood and cut it all the way around like so no problem whatsoever i do like those they're not for everybody the spiral blades if you're new to the scroll saw you do get a pin blade there's obviously a pin at both ends they come on your more cheaper basic saws like any any blade you want the teeth facing towards you they want to feel Smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. Made it right first time. That way you know you've got your blade in. But with these, they only cut in the forward direction. So if you were coming down there, you'd have to push that wood through there. Turn that. Cut down there. Turn the wood. Cut that little bit. Turn it. Turn it. Turn, and there's a lot of turning. If you're doing larger pieces, as you come to rotate round, it's just not going to fit on the neck of your saw. So spiral blades for me. They also do a pinless blade these are on your more fancy saws and it's literally just a clamp at the top and a clamp at the bottom hold it in place same with these ones I mean, it's hard to even see on here but there's actually teeth on there no there we go just there we go just about to see it there these are fantastic if you're doing detailed work you imagine we wanted to cut out the center of that hole uh, that eye should i say you'll drill a pilot hole put your little blade in there and you could cut out that piece if you wanted to a scroll saw project where well, obviously with your pin blades you wouldn't fit that because the pin would be in the way so pin blades for larger outer cuts pinless blades for really detailed work plus the outside obviously some people do some fantastic work with those straight pinless blades i just prefer a spiral blade so we'll pop this one on the saw 
and literally just cut this out and then when we come back we'll get the flexi cable on a dremel with a nice engraving bit and just generally tidy it up a bit of sanding down and then we'll be on towards the painting side of things Right, so we've gone round with our spiral blade. We've cut that out no problem whatsoever. Nice and easy, that one. Now, I'm not a scroller by any stretch of the imagination. I'm more of a router. So we will require a little bit of tidying up. But those spiral blades, people complain about the dust and stuff. But I've literally just took that out as you've, as you've seen it. And I personally don't find anything wrong with that. We need a little bit of sandpaper on the back. Just get rid of those knobblies. But like I say, we're going to go around, give it a nice little bit of shaping and a general tidy up inside. For that, I like to use a flexi cable or flexi shaft, I believe, on a Dremel or any rotary tool. This is just a cheap eBay special. And it's fantastic for cleaning out with. I like to use engraving bits. They come in different sizes like this with different fancy round heads, flat heads. And I like to get one with a flat head on. Similar to what we've got inside there now. There we go. And that's perfect for getting in. And just giving it a general tidy up all the way around, like so. Just get rid of these knobbly bits and maybe get into these sections here that we couldn't get in with the end milling bits. Just give it a nice tidy up. Then a good bit of good old sandpaper. And then before we get onto it painting, we'll put a little slit into the back. I'll show you that in a minute, but for now, We'll just give it a nice tidy up. Right, that's enough sanding down and cleaning up for me. Sanding is not one of my favourite parts of the project. But you can see from that, it's definitely near enough for what we want for the side of the shed. Now just before we start painting this and putting some nice clear varnish on to finish it off with, we just want to put a slit in the back for hanging purposes. I do this on all my projects and all we use is simple T-slot bit. This is a 5 16 you might just see it on there. We're we going for it. There we go. So it's quarter inch shaft and it's a 5 16 bit. That's the size on the end. And that's just enough for the type of screws that I use. And the idea is we put it in the router. I made myself a personal little template, if you want to call it. And I know, because this is the same size piece of wood as the project, I'll pop that in the router. You obviously don't need the adapter, call it. Pop it in there. Set the depth I want. I know it slides across nicely. And that's just enough for your little screw to fit in there. Slide across and that will hold your project without any screws or nails showing. And the further you have your screw into the wood. So if that would just have the edge of the screw showing. That would be really tight to push on there. Like so. And that's not going to go anywhere. Bigger projects. You could put two slits in. If it's too tight. Just take the screw out of the wall a bit. And it will slot on a lot easier. So I just wrote this one just to show you, just one little slit across the back will be enough to hold a little Hong Kong Fui in place. We'll do that next. Right, 
Right, we're heading towards the finishing line now. You can see from that we've got our nice slit in the back and that's plenty for hanging him up. Now all we've got to do is paint it now, put some nice bit of varnish on and this little project will be finished. For painting I like to use acrylic paints but add a bit of water in them to make more of a stain than an actual paint. And we do the proper appropriate colours that it requires and then we'll give it a quick sanding down so we don't have to be too careful with the paint when we put, fill in these sections here because we're all going to sand over it all afterwards just to expose the nice fresh wood again and you could leave that and put linseed oil on there or just to darken it down a bit personally myself we're going to paint that black so all these raised sections will all be painted black just so it pops out really nicely with the rest of the colours that are in it some projects it's nice to leave a bit of wood showing unfortunately certain projects just require a lot of paint but it's still a nice little effect at the end okay so i'll go indoors now we'll paint this spray it all the next time we come back this little project should be finished Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now I gave him four or five coats of a crystal clear. Just give him a little bit more protection and gives it a nice shine. Be ideal for indoor pieces. However, for outdoor pieces, you'll only get so long out of it. So you definitely want to look into a, a better finish on it if you want your projects to last a bit longer. These basically just end up on the side of my shed. So I'm not overly concerned when they start to age a little bit just nice nice fun project and there we have it this one is done so it's hong kong fooey it measures in at 13 inches by six inches across we routed out the lines with the cnc bits and then we came in with end milling bits and we tried the straight flush bits on these two sections for all the clear out and then we use a cheap acrylic paint slightly watered down and then we sprayed it all with a nice crystal clear varnish just to finish him off. And that's it. This little project is finished. Give it a go and just enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much for watching.